Good afternoon and welcome to Bath High School, where this afternoon WSN brings you a matchup of two of the top ladies basketball programs in the state of Ohio. The Fort Lauderdale Redskins are here to play the Bath Wild Kittens. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play -play. alongside Mr. Josiah Sto Stober. Josiah, Fort Army comes in the number one winning program in girls basketball in the state of Ohio, 940 wins. Bath is fourth at 922. Both having good years this year. Should be a good game today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's almost like the tradition of these two schools kind of sets the stage for tonight's game, for this afternoon's game. As you said, you know, two of these programs that the longevity of their history and the success they've had kind of sets the stage for this. And we like to see these non-conference battles, uh, you know, between these solid programs. And both of them are having really good years. As you said, uh, Fort Laramie comes in 15-1 and one on the year, only lost to a very good Ottawa Glendorf team. And we look at this Bath Wildcats team uh, coached by Greg Malk. Uh, you know, 460 wins in his career, only two away from, three away from the school record um, held by Gretchen Pritchard. So, uh, should be a great matchup today. Well, you mentioned Fort Laramie and, and Carlos Siegel there. They are 15 and one. They're nine and zero in the SCAL play. What what can we see from the Redskins today? Yeah, after getting you know some information from Coach, and we always love when coaches are, yeah. are give us some information before the game and what they've really been working on in practice this week. You know, she mentioned some keys for this game got a rebound. Bath has a lot of size um, there um, and likes to play that zone. So she knows she's got a rebound limit Bath to only one shot. And especially with that zone is can they attack it efficiently, you know, move the ball quickly, get those open shots that they look for. And then they also just got to play within themselves. Let's look at Fort Laramie's starting lineup. Number 11, Ava Turner, 5'8", senior, averaging 11.9 points per game. 21 is Victoria Mesher, 6-foot sophomore, averaging 6.7 points per game. Number 22, Skylar Albers, a 5'10", junior, at 7.5 points a game. Number 30 is Jaden Rose, 5'5", junior, 2.1. And number 40 is Avery Brandewey, leads the team in scoring at 12.1 and 8 rebounds a game, and she is a 5'10", sophomore. Bath also having a really good year. They're 13 and three, four and two in the Western Buckeye League. How about Greg Mock's team? Yeah, as you said, you know, having a really good year. Has struggled a little bit here recently, but they're looking to get back on track. And today will be a great day to do that against the solid Fort Laramie Redskins team. But some keys for this Bath Wildcats team is one, they got to rebound, use that size to their advantage, limit Fort. Uh, Lauren me to only one shot. Don't give them any opportunities for this high scoring offense. Um, and then also just take care of the ball. This Fort Laramie team likes to throw at a, a variety of defenses, likes to play some physical man to man, but we'll throw in some zones and some trapping. So can they take care of the ball today? Bath Wildkitten starting lineup will go this way. Number two is Faith Clark, 5'2", sophomore at 2.3 points per game. Her sister Rachel wears number 20. She's a 5'5", senior, averaging 7.7 .7 points per game and nearly four assists. Number 22, Claire Faust, 6'1", junior at 9.8 points per game and 6.9 rebounds. And the Oliver sisters, number 32, and 6'0", junior, 11 points per game, 6 rebounds. Number 33, Elena Oliver, 6'0", senior, at 12 points per game and 7.2 rebounds. It's Fort Laramie, 15 and one. It's Bath, 13 and three. That action is coming up right after this. You're watching High School Basketball, WOSN. Welcome back to Bath High School. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Reese, Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Mark Shine and Josiah Stober, our officials today, Curtis Bigelow, Anthony Shu, and Brett Roberson. Fort Laramie comes in averaging 50.6 points per game. They give up 29.8. Bath Wildcat, similar numbers. They scored at 46 and a half. They give up 32.4. Jump center, Avery Brandwe will jump center along with Claire Faust. And we are underway. Non-conference basketball on a Saturday afternoon. Bath comes out in their traditional 2-3 zone. Trap down inside. Start -over. Yep, get a trap down inside. And Faith Clark passes the ball to Sister Rachel. Fort Army starts in there, man-to-man -man situation. This is Elena Oliver. And Ann Oliver gets a three look. Claire Faust secures the rebound and will muscle it back up. And Claire Faust has our first basket today. Yeah, that was one of the things that Coach Siegel was worried about was the bath and their size and getting those offensive rebounds. And 
We saw there on that last possession a shot and a great rebound by Claire Faust to put it back up. Ava Turner in a hurry to get down the floor, ran over a Bath defender. That's her first foul in the basketball game, an offensive foul and a turnover. We'll head the other way. And Oliver. And this is Elena Oliver. Rachel Clark off the screen. Rachel heads to the lane. A little runner in the lane. It's a little hard. And the ball will bounce around. And the rebound is secured by Fort Larmer. Here comes Jaden Rose ahead of the pack. And short jumper off the baseline by Skyler Albers. And it will go off a wildcat and out of bounds. And this Fort Larmer team will look to run early, see if they can get it up quickly up the floor before Bath gets set in this zone. And we've seen it the last couple times as they tried to do that. And as they draw a foul here. Yeah, quick pass inside. We'll get our first foul of the game. That will go to Ann Oliver and headed to the free throw line will be Victoria Mesher, a 68% free throw shooter. Our free throws today are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. As Victoria makes the first free throw. And the second, we're tied at two early on. Rachel Clark, and the ball stripped loose. Nice defensive play that time by Avery Brandewey. And then pass goes ahead from her, ends up in Ava Turner's hands, and that's stolen. Here's Faith Clark headed to the rim, and Faith's shot will be a little hard. Rachel Clark gets a three look. That bounces around and <laughs> securing a rebound <laughs> laying on the floor that time was Jaden Rose. As yeah, Jaden Rose fell, found herself <laughs> on the floor, and, but found the ball come right to her and get a possession here for this Fort Lormie Redskins team. There's a jumper in the lane that will rattle out for Ava Turner. Rebound to Elena Oliver. Still tied at two. A couple of minutes into this one. Lane is continuing in this man-to-man -man defense. Faust oh. looking. And penetration dribble is stripped loose that time from Elena Oliver. Redskins the other way. Turner. And they will reset with Jaden Rose on top. It's 2-3 zone at Bath play. Slash to the middle. The runner in the lane will go for Ava Turner. Averaging nearly 12 points a game, has her first basket today. Fort Lorme was finding a little bit of success against that 2-3 zone, finding it in that, that quick cutter into the middle. Had the last two shots there, and a uh, turnover here, though, by this Bath Wildcats yep. team. Pass went over the head inside, trying to go teammate on a flash cut. That didn't work. Here's Bath in a 2-2-1 press. Long pass ahead to Turner. Faust challenges the shot and then secures the rebound. We're going to get, nope, ripped it loose. Thought we might get a held ball. There's the rebound. Ann Oliver's going to throw out that pass. Rachel Clark. Rachel steams down the floor and finishes. Well, both teams early are trying to get out quickly, seeing those quick outlet passes and getting up the floor before either team's able to really set up that defense. First subs for each team are at the scorer's tables. Had a pretty fast pace opening four minutes of this one and not many breaks. Flash cut in the lane. Here's a kick out. This will be Turner's three. And hustling after the rebound is Avery Brandewey. Another possession here for this Redskins team as Brandewey was able to chase down that long rebound. Looked like the Bath players thought it was going to go out of bounds, but she was able to secure it and get another possession for her team. Skyler Albers looks inside. And Skyler cuts baseline in a short corner area. There's a pass inside. Brandewey's inside and going to get a foul and a rebound opportunity. That rebound basket will go to Victoria Mesher. She's going to get an and one. First foul on Claire Faust. 
for sub for Bath comes in. That will be number 23, Kelsey Carlson. Kelsey's a 5'8 freshman. I think we got a sub for Mesher, and she makes the free throw, and we do as number 12, Carissa Meyer, will enter the basketball game. So Victoria Mesher will set down with a quick five points. Just seems like early on, uh, Josiah, that uh, Fort Larm is a little quicker than the ball right now. A little more pep in her step, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like, especially on those, you know, 50-50 balls where they're winning those rebounds. You know, the ball's bouncing to them. They got some lucky bounces earlier, but yeah, I agree. They, you know, seems like they're they're the, a little bit quicker than Bath is, as we see another yeah. turnover yeah, here. Yeah, we do. Pass by Brandon. We've been in the process of doing so. She stepped on the sideline. For Army is coming off a win on Thursday night against Jackson Center. That was a 61-29 victory. They were led by Victoria Mesher with 18 that night. 13 from Ava Turner, 12 from Avery Brandewe. Bath also coming off a Thursday night win in Western Buckeye League play as they defeated Salina 45-22. 17 for Elena Oliver. Lob pass, left-handed finish goes inside for Elena Oliver, her first basket. Number 41, Summer Hoying checked in after the foul a moment ago. There's Jaden Rose tracking that one down. Well, Bath will look to get those quick strikes as they did on that out of bounds plays using that size. Yep. There's Summer Hoying pops off the bench and pops one in the basket. 9 6, Redskins. Backdoor cut, and Carlson cannot secure the pass. That will be a turnover, and that will bring Ann Oliver back into the game. Also back into the game will be Victoria Mesher. I think it's key, too, for this bat team. Only coming out in the year, only averaging 12 turnovers a game. Six turnovers here in this first quarter. You know, has to say a lot with this Fort Laramie defense. And Oliver with a steal, went for the short shot from 12 feet. It wouldn't fall for her. Back the other way we go with Brandewe. And then Mesher, reset, gets the 2-3 zone. Almost six minutes into this one, pass to the baseline, and finishing inside will be Carissa Meyer. That you are correct, Josiah, those flash cuts are opening up for him. 11-6. Well, well, I think we saw early in the, those first couple possessions, Fort Army was cutting to the, the, the foul line and having a lot of success. You know, now they're finding forcing that team up a little bit higher, and they're finding that success behind them. Elena Oliver could not finish in the lane. Turner passes inside, but it's knocked out of bounds by Ann Oliver. Skyler Albers back in the game. Izzy McDermott winner for the first time for Bath, the 5'6 freshman. I think 23, uh, Alexis, or Alex Rose is in the game. She is a 5'9 junior for Fort Laramie as well. Pretty quick pace. Team subbing a little bit. And three people roaming around the inside that zone. Somebody's always flashing the basketball. Yeah, they're doing a good job of cutting and forcing that to move in that 2-3 zone. And that's what you want to do against the zone is force that team to go side to side. And Fort Long is doing a good job here early. As yeah. they got another turnover. Claire Faust tips that one loose pass. Point guard. Rachel Clark's on the bench with a trainer right now, so we'll see what that situation develops into. This is McDermott, who checked in just a moment ago, and then Faith Clark. Under a minute to go. I'm starting to see that defense that, like you said, uh, Fort Lormy only giving up 29 points a game, so we're starting to see that tough defense Showing up and forcing Bath to make a tough shot. And Oliver took one of those tough shots under good defense and couldn't score. I think Carlos Siegel just said, we'll take last shot of quarter number one. Her team's up by five. This will be a three ball that'll go up from Victoria Mesher. That misses. And <laughs> when a sub pops up off the bench to take that <laughs> shot. <laughs> I think I know what that's all about. Yeah, 
Coach Seeger, Seeger wasn't too happy with yes. that last shot with 12 seconds to Got go. Got a hand on that shot and also a hand on hand. And to the free throw line will go Elena Oliver. Alex Rose picks up her first foul with 1.8 to go. And to the free throw line will go Elena Oliver. 85% free throw shooter on the year. That one went a little short. Here comes Jaden Rose back in the game and Avery Brandaway. Well, you just saw Coach Siegel talking to Victoria Mesher yep. um, on that last stoppage of play and said, hey, you know, we still got 12 seconds to go. Let's take our time. We can get that shot anytime. That's what coaching's all about, isn't it? Just bring them over and work with them. That one goes. Oliver has three now. There's a throw from three-quarter court. Opening quarter will go the way of the Fort Lauderdale Redskins, 11-7. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Bath High School. Our scoreboard today is presented by Reese Meyer and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Our scoreboard shows Fort Lauderdale with 11. They are led by Victoria Mesher with five. Bath Wild Kittens have seven. They have three from Elena Oliver. Mark Shine and Josiah Stober here as we head to quarter number two. Yeah, as we look at Bath, really struggling there in that first quarter to get some good shots. You know, use some of that length to get some easy buckets early on. But this Fort Laramie defense is really suffocating them, making it very difficult that last second half of the first quarter. Pass inside. Elena passes to Faust on the perimeter. This is Anna overhead at baseline, and she lost it out of bounds. You know, Josiah was here two years ago for this game. It was very similarly played. Bass Chandler Clark made a three at the end of the third quarter. That propelled them into the fourth quarter when she made several other threes. Her teammates played very well, and Bath secured a rather easy win. Fort Romney won this game a year ago down in Redskin country. Here's a three out of the corner that'll be short. Elena Oliver rebounds. Rachel Clark still working with a trainer over here on the path bench. Give and go. Oliver makes the three. And Elena with five. Yeah, good cut there by Elena Oliver as a teammate was able to find her. Use that good left-handed layup, which, you know, as a coach, love seeing that left hand yes, you on do. that left side. I like the give and go part of it. Make a good pass, cut to the rim. Here's a pass inside that goes awry, and that pass from Ava Turner. This will bring Carissa Meyer back in the game. A really uncharacteristic turnovers yeah. here by both teams is you know coming in to the game. Like I said, don't turn the ball over very often, but both mm -hmm. teams have seven turnovers here early in this first half. Now you can see with Rachel Clark on the bench that uh, Elaine Oliver is playing some point guard right now. This is Faith Clark. Is he McDermott? This pass inside to Faust, but it's stolen. Pushed, pumped away by Avery Brandaway. Rachel Clark has moved down to set next to the assistant coaches, so see if she's able to get back in the basketball game. Yeah, it looked like they were working on her, her thigh, her right thigh. It looks like she's walked back to the coaches and no longer working with the athletic trainer. Rose gives it up to Turner on the base on the wing. This is Rose again, pass in the middle. Pass down size, poked away, and Izzy McDermott has it. Comes Ann Oliver. And that pass is a little soft and gets poked away. Here's a pass ahead and trying to score in transition. That pass goes a little bit wide for Avery Brandewey to secure. And we're going to get our first time out of the basketball game. It's 11-9 in favor of Fort Larmer. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Out of town, we can't get WSN. WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Bath takes the first time out. Rachel Clark may be away from the trainer, but she is not back in the basketball game yet. And Selena Oliver is playing point guard. 
Here's Ann Oliver to the rim, and her strong move will go up, and she will get to shoot free throws. See who the foul gets assessed to. Carissa Meyer gets the call into the free throw line. This will be Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. I think a good timeout there by Coach Malk earlier. Kind of settled his team down. Uh, I think if it wasn't Coach Malk, it would be Coach Siegel who was going to yeah, be calling a timeout. I, they were both getting that way, weren't they? And Oliver split the pair of free throws. He has her first point. The lead's down to one. Pass inside. Back out front. It comes to Meyer. And they swing it around to the opposite wing. Brandewee. This will be a corner jumper and long jump shot out of the corner. You can see who they gave that to. Number 22, Skyler Albers. Couldn't read the number from this far away. Here comes Fort Lomery back the other way with a four point lead. Skyler Albers now has 15 made three point field goals on the season. Big hit there by Fort Laramie yeah. has kind of went a little drought there scoring and we're kind of stuck on that number 11 for a while. So big three in the corner. They had 11 at the quarter break, so it took them a better than three minutes to get uh, a basket here in quarter number two is pass inside. This is Rose in the corner. She wants to go baseline and gets cut off. Brandewe inside. Here's a skip pass. Oh, a nice move to the goal and scoring is Skyler Albert. Uh, what a tough basket yeah. as he drove to the lane and saw some contact and was able to finish. Here's Oliver working the lane and shot goes up and in. She's got three now all in this quarter. Much needed bath basket. Uh, both teams hitting some tough shots there as a good drive there by Ann Oliver to go to her left and spin back over her left shoulder and hit the two. Jaden Rose takes the basketball and resets for an Army's offense. Here's the pass down low to Mesher. Short corner situation. Brandewee gets a little look in the lane, and that rolls around. Mesher's shot won't go, and she gets her own rebound, goes back up again and scores. A persistent Victoria Mesher has seven in the game. Yeah, it looked like there was a lot of contact on that first shot, but didn't give up. Put the ball up, got her own rebound, and was able to score. Pass inside. Faust can't finish under pressure. We're going the other way. Rose looks. And her coach takes a timeout. We're at 319 to go here in quarter number two. It's 18-12 in favor of Fort Larmer. You're watching high school basketball at WSN. WTLW is in the 18th season of giving the sports report every Friday night. You can join Patrick Candler for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around. That's every Friday night at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Carla Siegel with her first time out. Her team leads by six. Right, Coach Siegel talking to her players, kind of trying to get them to calm down, especially against this 2-3 zone. Feels like they've missed some easy passes and weren't moving the ball very well, so called that timeout to settle down our troops. Pass inside and surrounded by, oh, and I thought a little bit too aggressive that time. Faith Clark will pick up her first foul, team's third. Each team has three team fouls in the opening half, and nobody has more than one. Avery Brandewey will do the honors taking the ball out of bounds in front of the bath bench. Pass inside, and the ball will go off the leg of Summer Hoy. No, nope, we'll stay with. Yep, I think we're going to get a little official conversation, and we will. And yep, we're going to go the other way with a busy time of year for our ladies basketball. Fort Army will be at Fairlawn on Monday. SCAL game, and then Houston next Saturday. Carlson, Faust. 
forlornly staying in this man-to-man -man defense. And a lot of players with you know, long arms, they get a lot of hands, and just forces another turnover on this Bath team. That they have. Bath has a, a game at Lima Central Catholic on Tuesday evening, and then they will have a Western Buckeye League game with Defiance here on Thursday night next week. Coin goes up to score, can't. Big battle for the rebound, and Faust is going to pull it away. And Oliver, and she will lose the basketball. We're going to get a held ball situation. Let's see what the arrow says. And it will stay with Fort Laramie. And I think Bath's really missing that point guard I, I here. I was thinking the same thing. You know, must, you know, look like has a little bit of knee brace on, you know, her knee now. Yeah. So hoping she can get back into the game, but still sitting there by the assistant coach. That's also changed their zone a bit. They start odd, odd, go, odd guard and switch to 2 3. Rebound that time to Elena Oliver. Elena off a screen from Faust to the rim and fights it up and scores. Elena's got seven in the game now. Yeah, good take there by Elena. As saw that. Fort Laramie has shifted to the one side. And she decided to take it on her own. And much needed bucket for this Bath Wildcats team. Ava Turner looked at a three in the corner and turned it down. Here's Brandewee trying to get inside. Ava's got 11 threes on the season and chose not to shoot that last opportunity. Here's that flash baseline, though, and this pass inside. Uh, good play by Brandewee to keep it alive. 60 seconds to go, opening half. And Faith Clark forces a turnover. Back in the game, Victoria Mesher. Back in the game, Skylar Albers. A couple of starters back in the game for Coach Siegel. Well, you know, Fort Laramie gives up less than 30 points a game. They're at 14 here, approaching halftime, right on par for them. Well, if you look at this offensive output by this Fort Laramie team, you know, their leading scorer on the year, Avery Brandley, comes in with 12.1 points a game. Hasn't scored yet tonight, and they're up four. This is Ann Oliver with the count on. Yep. Backs out of it. Elaine Oliver. Yeah, it looks like Bath is yeah. content to take this final shot. This will be Clarkson. Throws a cross court. Faust. Another cross court pass with a left handed three. Big three ball from Kelsey Carlson. And that big three will make it an 18 17 game as we played the first 16 minutes and head to the halftime break. Back after this, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Bath High School where the number two ranked Fort Army Redskins lead the Bath Wild Kittens at halftime 18-17. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Meyer and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Josiah Stober has been keeping stats. What do you have, Josiah? Yeah, for the visiting team for the Fort Army Redskins, uh, leading scorer on the afternoon is Victoria Mesher with seven points there in the first half. Skylar Albers has five. Uh, but the big story has been the, the Bath shutting out Avery Brandewee. Uh, comes into the season averaging 12.1 points a game and has zero so far here in this first half. Uh, for the home Bath Wildcats, a big hit uh, at the end of the, the second quarter by Kelsey Carlson to get it to a one-point game. Uh, but leading is Elena Oliver with seven points, um, and then Ann Oliver with three, and then, as I said, Kelsey Carlson with that big three to end the first half. One thing we should note that uh Rachel Clark did not come out of the locker room with the team. We were told by the trainer that it's an, a knee sprain of some type. The seriousness we're not sure of, and Coach Mock has chosen to not bring her on the floor in the second half in this non-league contest. So Bath will be down their point guard here as we head into the second half action. 
And that will be a big loss that is. for this bat team as you know they have a lot of size, but they need those guards there to get them the ball. So you know it will be up to Elena Oliver to, to start the offense for this bat team. Kelsey Carlson will be her replacement. She made the three at the buzzer, and there's a three coming out of the halftime break for Elena Oliver, and she's got 10 points in the game and the Wild Kittens lead. Her 29th three-point field goal of the year as the ball gets ripped loose, and we'll go to the Wild Kittens. Here they come and gets the token pressure, and right to the rim, and Ann Oliver will go up and score. Yeah, nobody picks up Ann Oliver in transition. It looked like Fort Laramie was a little confused on their matchups. And Ann Oliver takes it to the rim with some contact and an opportunity for old-fashioned three-point play. Avery Brandewey gets the foul. Our free throws today are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here as the free throw goes down. That is point six for her. And Kittens are up five here early on. 30 seconds of the half. That three rattles out, but the rebound is secured by Carissa Meyer. On top, it will go to Jaden Rose. There's a pass inside to Brandewee. This will be a, th a three by Meyer, and she scores. Just her sixth made three-point field goal of the season, but a big one there cuts the bat lead to two. Yeah, both teams coming out a little hot after halftime. It's both teams finding a little bit of space, getting the ball inside. Faust posted out. up, but stared at it too long, and Faust dives for the ball and saves it. Oliver won to three, but got defended quickly. Elena pounded out front by Rose. This is Faust. Skip pass, Faith Clark. And overpassed inside, we're gonna go the other way. Running out in transition that time was Skylar Albers. Yeah, she really a great catch the there by yeah. Albers. That one-handed catch that bring the ball down. Looked like it might have been a little bit too high, but was able to catch the ball. Wild pass inside to Brandry was too tall for her. And Oliver with the basketball. And takes the ball all the way inside, a little reverse layup. But the rebound comes to Sister Elena, who goes up in the air and rolls out for almost had an and one for her. Foul will go to Jaden Rose, her first. And with 10 points, Elena Oliver will head to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Bounces that one in. Back into the basketball game will come Alex Rose, a 5'9 junior. Victoria Mesher sits down. <laughs> Second free throw. That one also is good. She's three for four at the line today, an 85% free throw shooter on the season. Here's Jaden Rose. See Bath continue to stay in that 2-3 zone. Rose looked at that three, it didn't go. Here's a 17-footer that will go for Skylar Albers. She's got seven now. Siegel just changed some defensive. Uh, who's matched up with who while they're on the fly there? And Oliver with the basketball. Elena gets a screen, step back three for her. Oh, splashed another one. Elena Oliver has come out here hot in this second quarter. Second three here of the third quarter. Eight points for her in the quarter, 15 in the game. Pushes the lead to five. A lot of points on the board here in quarter three compared to what it was in the opening half. Ball fake and jump shot on the baseline. That was really well done by Alex Rose for her first basket. And Coach Siegel says, we're going to try some zone this time. Going to start as an odd guard zone. It looks like come out poke and loose. One, three, one. And, and yeah, hit out of bounds that time by Rose. Here comes Summer Hoying in the basketball game. Also Victoria Mesher into the game.
kind of turned into game on here in quarter three, hadn't it? Yeah, so both teams really was, getting after it. Yeah, we saw a couple, you know, droughts by both teams there in that second quarter, but not here at halftime. So we like to call that good coaching, right? Yeah. <laughs> Little one-two-two match going on right now as far as the defense from the Fort Laramie Redskins. See how Bath attacks that. It's Faust in the lane. Oliver would push three. That was a little long. Rebound goes up. That shot will not fall inside for Carlson, and it will go to Fort Laramie. That will bring Izzy McDermott off the bench, a 5'6 freshman. And Izzy will replace Kelsey Carlson, so freshman for freshman for Coach Mock's team. Rachel sitting on the bench. Coach is trying to figure out a good lineup here and brings in more of a guard. Play on top of that 2-3 zone. Here's a three that'll go up. That ball does not fall for Skyler Albers, but the rebound comes down inside to Mesher and Victoria finishes. Points 8-9 for her today. Single point lead. Last four points have gone the way of the Redskins. McDermott, Faith Clark. Well, they've got that zone really high right now, don't they? A little room on the baseline to operate. And Coach Mock's going to call timeout. He will do so with 3.12 to go in the third. His team up one. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. TV 44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. You can visit WTLW.com. Coach Mock takes his second time out, this time with a single point lead as we're five minutes into quarter number three. The zone has gone one through one trap. Coach Siegel decided to switch it up out of that timeout. There's a lob pass down low to Faust. Spin move for her, bounces out. Rebound Brandewey. Got what they wanted, just couldn't finish. For Army trying to score, take the lead back. They led by one at half, they're down by one now. Bath has been in the 2-3 zone the entire game as they have throughout this season. Mesher on top, ball goes down to the corner. Throw some Meyer down there with the basketball, and then Brandewey. Good cut. Rebound their own shot, back up goes Mesher. And she will go to the free throw line. A great cut there by Victoria Mesher, as she was at the top of that offensive set. Ball got quickly switched to the wing, and she dove, and was able to unfortunately miss the first one, but grab her own rebound. She is a perfect four for four at the free throw line today and has 10 points. That knotted the score up at 28. And that one as well. Claire Faust picks up two fouls today. She and Ava Turner are the only people in the game that have two fouls today. A pretty cleanly played game. Faith Clark had to run that ball down, it was tipped. Faust, skip pass. Oliver pushed out from the corner, a little hard. And the rebound comes to Mesher, 5'10", six-foot sophomore. Trying to extend their lead. Really good offensive possession there by Bath as they were able to get it into that low post area and switch it quickly and find the open shooter, just wasn't able to knock it down. Brandewey inside, passes down low. That was a really well-executed play that ends up in the Carissa Meyer basket. Really nice high-low action. Yeah, Avery Brandewey, Brandewey hasn't found a whole lot of success on the offensive end, but able to find her teammate there, catch it quickly as the defense collapsed. Elena Oliver hustles into a rebound, got trapped in the corner. Her coach calls timeout. 1.16 to go here in the quarter. We're going to keep it here. What questions do you have about life and about God, about things happening in your community or family? 
Get answers when you watch Life Questions. Each week, four local pastors will discuss relevant topics and answer questions submitted by people just like you. Life Questions is on TV 44 Sundays at 2 o'clock and Wednesdays at 9.30. And you can find it online at WTLW.com. Bath takes their third timeout. 1.16 to go here in the quarter, and they trail by three. Good hustle rebound that time, and Coach Saar pinned in the baseline. He decided to take that timeout and save a possession. Yeah, at this time of the game, you know, Coach Malk understands the importance of each possession you know, for his team. So Saul, his, his player was you know, kind of pinned there, like you said, in the corner. Good timeout there by Coach Malk to rally his troops and see if they can get a good shot here in this next possession. Well, this is not a good sign because Curtis Bigelow, our official on the baseline, is being schooled by Jacob O'Neill, our cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting words of wisdom, uh, I believe, Yes, he from is. I'll tell you what, between Jacob and Cassidy, we got a great crew here today. and. We always appreciate what the people do at WSN, our camera people, audio people, and all that. Bath back on the floor. Tough place to inbound right in front of Jacob O'Neill's camera. Elena Oliver looking and finally finds her sister, gets the ball back, and give and go scores for them. That's a nice play. Elena was 17 now. Yeah, we've seen two possessions in a row where some really good passes by teammates out being selfish, looking for the cutters. and get some easy buckets for their team. Under a minute to go. Redskins with a single point lead. See how patient the Redskins choose to be and if at some point they decide to go last shot of the quarter. Well, you can hear Coach Siegel yelling from the sidelines, move the ball quickly. She wants them to be patient, but you gotta move this defense. Been flashing Brand Brandon into the high post and see if that becomes the play that gets them a shot here. Here's Mesher posted up inside. Too many people inside with too much size, and we get a foul. That goes to Ann Oliver, her second. Team's second of the half. Each team has two fouls in half number two. This will be Albers to inbounds. Brandewee on top with it. Skyler Albers gets it back. Mesher calling for the ball inside. She's got Faust on her back. And they can't get it to her. Comes the last play of the quarter, looks like. Pass inside, bang, Brown almost went in. How about the rebound play? Victoria Mesher scoops up the loose ball and scores. The three shot, the buzzer doesn't have a chance for Bath to get it off late. And we will head to the fourth with Fort Laramie in a three point lead. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. We're back at Bath High School with the number two ranked Fort Lauderdale Redskins lead the Bath Wild Kittens 33-30 after three quarters. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Meyering and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. A 15-13 quarter by way of Fort Laramie, and they will take a three-point lead into the last eight minutes. Yeah, big quarter there by Victoria Mesher uh, was able to corral that strange yeah. pass um, earlier to end the quarter for this Fort Laramie team, but coming in 13 points here this afternoon. Comes in only averaging 6.7 points a game, so a great game so far. Ball's poked loose, but not far enough. This is Brandewee working against a trap. The only people who scored for Bath in quarter number three were named Oliver. Three ball bounces out. Faust gets the rebound. No, it was not Faust, it was Oliver, and the pass is stolen and scored. And Oliver's pass was stolen. The foul will go to Elena Oliver. Her first. The basket goes to Avery Brand. Avery Brandway is finally in the books tonight. This free throw today is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here, and that Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken rattles in. The free throw rattles in. For Avery Brandon, we lead at six all of a sudden. Fort Lum is back in that 3 2 zone. Elena Oliver. Elena had 
10 points in quarter number three. Momentarily giving Bath a lead and got away from the end of the quarter. Now they trail by six. Here's a pass inside, just tipped away. How about Mesher's play? Back inside to Faust it goes. Cross court pass. Elena Oliver was fouled on that pass to win cross court. Elena will get to go to the free throw line. A great hustle play there by Victoria Mesher. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to save it to her teammates. Bath was able to corral it and find the cutter. Oliver, an opportunity to cut to this lead. Here's Elaine Oliver, whose free throw bounces out. He is now three for five at the free throw line today. And see what she does with attempt number two. And that one bounces in. 18 points for her today of the 31 for the Wild Kittens. Here's a pass ahead to Turner. She's trapped on the baseline. He eventually finds Rose. Boy, Mesher's having a good half, but that one won't fall for her. That ball's ripped loose from behind. Another rebound. Skyler Albers with that one is. Fort Lomer is just pounding the offensive glass right now. Yeah, Fort Lomer is being a little bit more physical here in this second half, making it very difficult for Bath to rebound out of this 2 3 zone. Really crashing the board really well. Five point lead. Looking inside, there's a pass inside. Mesher's had a good half, and that ball's going to be a little pass, a little strong. You know, Josiah, we got our scouting report from uh, from Coach Siegel, and she said, "Well, Bass tall. Well, you know, Avery Brandewee is 5'10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you know, Skyler Alberts is 5'10. Victoria Mesher's six foot. They've got some size too. Right? Yeah, that's a that's a tough problem to deal with when you, when yeah. you have that size too." Here's Faith Clark looking for somebody to pass to. Skip passes will end up in the hands of McDermott. Her three doesn't go. Here comes Mesher with her 13 points. Brandewee. See how patient the Redskins choose to be on this possession. Yeah, Fort Lormer doesn't really have to rush anything here. Up five points here in this fourth quarter, allowing you know Bath just to sit back in that two-three zone. We'll see if Coach Malk decides to switch it up here. Well, Coach Malk has just pointed out to all three officials that the three-second lane is not being enforced this evening, and they're running those screens inside, and uh, he thinks they're staying there too long as that ball goes out of bounds, and we'll go back to Bath. Here comes Carissa Meyer into the game. She has seven in the game today. Opportunity here for Bath to cut into this five-point lead by Fort Laramie. See if they can get some cutters and some movement, especially Fort Laramie is really high up there in that 3-2 press. So we'll see if somebody gets on that baseline to try to flatten out, create some spaces. Foul skip pass. And that ball goes astray as Faust was trying to post up and could not. 2-2-1 two, two, zone press coming from the Wild Kittens. They've used that periodically today, but Chris Meyer breaks it. And then they find Jaden Rose on top. Brandewee. And then they find Meyer on the wing. Pass and cut offense this time, and Coach Sika wants a timeout. We're 421 to go. Her team leads by five. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Check out our website, WOSN.tv, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Shine and Josiah Stober here at Bath High School. Carla Siegel, Siegel takes her second timeout. The team leads by five. They have scored just three points in the quarter. Bath has scored only a single point as we played four and a half minutes plus, three and a half minutes plus. We saw a really fast-paced third quarter, and now it's really slowed down. Both teams of Fort Laramie 
really deciding yeah. to take their time, which up five points here in the fourth quarter. Makes sense. Bath came out man to man out of the timeout. First time they've done that today. Back door cut. Pass ends up in Brandewee's hands. They couldn't score against the size of the Wild Kittens, but they reset. Pass inside, back cut, and Brandewee finishes with the left hand. A good cut there by Brandewee. Yes, it was. Saw her defender turn their head, expecting her to go up, and she cut behind him. Oliver lost the ball trying to get to the rim, headed to the rim the other way, and finishing in a run out is Skyler Albers. She's got nine now, and timeouts done wonders for Coach Siegel's team. Here's a long three. That was a huge basket for Elena Oliver to cut the lead. The three ball was her third of the night. She's got 21 in the game now. And we get a bath timeout, Josiah. That was a much needed basket. Yeah, big hit there by Elena Oliver. She's kind of really keeping her team in this and keeping it close. Has had some really big buckets here in the second half. As you said, the third three here in the second half. So see what Coach Malk decides to do out of this timeout, if they're going to keep up that full court pressure man to man or see what he decides to do. Elena Oliver has a 21 in the game, 14 of those that came in the second half. She and Sister Ann are the only Wild Kittens to score in the second half. We're looking at the other side, 13 points by Victoria Mesher, nine for Skylar Albers. You mentioned Avery Brandewee being scoreless for three quarters, but she's got five here in quarter number four. So it'll be Fort Army basketball out of bounds. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast it. Say thanks to viewer supporter TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to uh, bring us this programming and others just like it. So you can donate at WTLW.com and click donate. You know what I just did, Josiah? I read that upside down. I, I saw that. I was just <laughs> going to mention how impressed I was that uh, uh, you said that. But I'm going to guess that's not the first time you've ever well, read that. Well, <laughs> many years of being a social studies book, uh, U boat commander yeah. in, a, in a classroom. You learn to do all kinds of things. That's uh, going to be a foul that will go against Elena Oliver, her second. Look at the team fouls. Is that number four, I guess, is on the board. So Bath can be very aggressive a couple more times and not put for Army on a free throw line. They try to run a back cut. Nice play that time ends up in Jaden Rose's hand. Faith Clark guarding out front. Here's the pass inside. That was well done and Mesher scores. How about the passing here in the fourth quarter in particular from Fort Army? Yeah, a lot of that goes through Avery Brandley. He's had a couple opportunities where she just made some really good passes here to, to get her teammates open. You gotta like that, don't you? Maybe it's not your best scoring game this year, but you've done other things like rebound and make good passes. There's a left-handed three out of the corner. That one goes a little bit long, is rebounded by Rose, and we're gonna get a foul. The foul goes to Elena Oliver, her third, team's fifth. Well, two more fouls till they're in the bonus. And Fort Laramie in the year, 63% from the free throw line. So we'll see if Bath decides to get them there earlier. Back cut again. This time the pass ends up in Rose's hands. And she scores a two, standing on the three-point line. That's Jade Rose's first basket, but more good passing that time as they have really moved the ball well here, particularly in quarter four. Uh, you see it, how important those backdoor cuts have been. Another big shot there by, rebound by Brandewee. Ten-point lead, and Coach Siegel says with two minutes to go, we're going to slow this one down. Mesher's pass goes off the knee of her teammate, but it's saved out there by Ava Turner at midcourt. Here's Rose working to get it loose. She gives it up to Brandewee. And no rush here by this Redskins team as they're going to try to get as many passes and only accept an easy layup. And we'll see if Mesher goes up or what she does. She took a skip pass that time. Backside, couldn't finish. Here's the pass ahead to Faust. 
Claire turns and will be draw a foul. Nope, could be a held ball. To stay with that, however. Izzy McDermott pops in the game, so does Carissa Meyer. Faust, low post, pass out front. Faith Clark's three bounces around. Brandon, we rebounded that one on the baseline, and we're going to get a foul. This will be the sixth team foul on Bath as it goes to, I think, Elena Oliver. Let's see. Yes, it is. Foul four for her. Minute 18 to go in this one. Army leading the Shelby County Athletic League yet again. They have won the league every year since the 2017-18 season. In fact, they've not lost a game in the conference since the 2017-18 season. They won the conference that year with just that single league loss. And that will be foul number five on Elena Oliver. She fouls out after playing a very fine basketball game today, finishing with 21 points. Of the 34, the Wildkittens have on the board. Yeah, a really good game there by Elena Oliver. As you said, hit some really big shots here um, in this second half to try to keep Bath within um, you know, point total of Fort Laramie. But unfortunately, with that fifth foul, she'll have to sit for the remainder of the game. McDermott trying to get baseline and lost it. Was it out of bounds? It was. So we're under a minute to go, and Coach Siegel wants a full timeout. Well, Josiah, this is a basketball game we've done together, and we've got one coming up together on Tuesday night, too. Yeah, looking forward to watching Walpock and LCC play each other at Walpock on Tuesday night. Seen Walpock a couple of times this year, and uh, a lot of their wins have come in very close basketball games. They typically uh, have a, a low scoring affair, and when they can keep it to that pace, they score a lot of points. Coach Kill's team, I think they play the best schedule around. You know, not being in a league, he's looking for the best competition every night, and uh, they certainly look to see how they play this week uh, on Tuesday night. We have a chance to do that game. We'll air on Wednesday evening, and then lots of basketball coming up towards next weekend, Friday night into Saturday, and games that are replayed on Sunday. Yeah, it's crazy to think tournament time is just not around that the far away, is it? Had a chance to talk with several coaches this week. Talked to Coach Mock about the RPI we're using now to determine the seeding procedures. Yeah, you know, I, I really like that. You know, it takes it really out of yeah, the coach's hands, I, you know. Um, I, I think some of the coaches I like think it should be a, a tool, not the be-all and end-all. So yeah. there, there's difference of opinions, and if you're curious how that works, the Faust gets a shot inside and scores. She's got four now. There's a pass upside. This is Mesher, and that's stolen. And Oliver in the rim, and she will draw a foul. Um, I think that, that some of the coaches uh, think it should be a tool, but not to be all and end all, and others are happy with it. It's the same process we use in the NCAA. Your, your position on the seating is all done by computer points as she misses the free throw. Um, so the seeds are determined by the computer, but uh, after that, it, the, obviously the NCAA, it's a committee that makes the decision. Both free throws don't go. It's tipped out into the hands of Turner, and she will be fouled. But the one seed comes from the computer all, computer all the way down to seed number 16, but then the coaches get to decide what line to place themselves on. So that part of it has not changed. I think the other thing the coaches talk about is um, it's only being used in Northwest Ohio. That's kind of the guinea pig. So we're using a couple different methods of doing this, uh, seating across the state. Some people think that's not quite equitable either, but uh, we'll see where it is. That free throw gets missed. Here's a pass ahead. Unable to finish with that left-handed push was McDermott, and we're going to get a foul. We'll go the other way with 32 and a half to go. Well, I think the one thing it, it does take away is, you know, maybe those coaches that are in yeah. the same conference all voting for their own conference. You know, I, I've seen coaches, you know, who may have a really good team, but 
they're not in that conference. Um, so it, it does take away that number. Free throw good. Clark pick up the foul. The free throw was made by Jaden Rose. She has three points in the game. See if she can get the point four right here. So lead is nine. And now ten. Been a big fourth quarter for Fort Laramie. Faith Clark hands it off. And that ball is stolen. Brandon is going to throw it ahead and headed to the rim. And nope, unable to finish, but picked up by a teammate, Carissa Meyer. Meyer's got nine in the game now. Here's Oliver. She works inside. A little jumper for her in the lane. It's short. And Victoria Meshers had a really nice second half today. Rebounds the basketball. And this one will come to an end. It will be a 48-36 win for the Fort Laramie Redskins. They will have quarter scores that go this way. They have a quarter scores of 11, 7, 15, and 15. The Bath Wildcats quarter scores of 7, 10, 13, and 6. Last quarter was a nine-point quarter for the Fort Laramie Redskins, and they really did kind of pull away towards the end, Josiah. Yeah, great, a great fourth quarter there by this Fort Laramie team. You know, and really it was a team effort. We saw great games by Victoria Mesher, 15 points on the afternoon. You know, really that fourth quarter is real. Avery Brandon, we kind of woke up um, for this Fort Laramie team. You know, not her normal scoring output that we're used to seeing, but five points, but there were some big assists. Uh, to help her team, you know, really extend that lead in the fourth. And, you know, for, for Bath, you know, you got to mention Elena Oliver, the game she had tonight, 21 points on the night, fouls out um, in that fourth quarter, but, you know, really hit some big shots, three threes in that second half to really, you know, at one point get Bath the lead, um, but try to keep her team in the game. Well, one thing I'd like to mention, too, and that is Rachel Clark left with a knee injury, and, Probably had an effect on the basketball game, but more importantly, we hope she uh, heals quickly and can, can get back for the rest of the season. Fort Army will go to 16-1 on the season, remain 9-0 in the Shelby County Athletic League. Bath Wild Kittens will drop to 13-4. They are 4-2 in the Western Buckeye League. Bath plays at Lima Central Catholic on Tuesday. They have defiance here on Thursday. Fort Army on Monday night will go to Fairlawn. We want to thank our sponsors today. That would be Reese Myring and Company CPAs and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. We thank the athletic director here at Bath High School. That would be Kristen Holt, who got us all set up today. Our crew today has been Cassidy Driscoll and Jacob O'Neill. Cassidy will take this back to the station on Beatty Road and edit it all together. And what will she will edit together is a Fort Army victory, and that will be 48-36 over the Bath Wild Kittens. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN. <laughs>